Well, I've got a new video format for you to check out. We're going to do a vlog or a vlog, whatever the kids are calling it these days. I don't know. Because as I see what people gravitate toward on YouTube and content that people seem to find interesting, I thought that, hey, maybe it's a good idea to do something like that ourselves because there are some topics that have come up in uh, the past few months to a year that I thought might be interesting to talk about. So set up a little studio format here. Got a studio mic, a couple of studio lights going on. Got my laptop in front of me just under the camera so that uh, I can I can get some information for you and, and bring you up to date on a few things that are going on. So what I thought we would do for this very first edition of the vlog or vlog is talk about what has happened to the Monster Mobile Tool brand and all the events that led up to it, the stuff that's going on today, and what lies ahead in the future for that brand. And we can piece together most of the story based on articles that have been written about it, and I can give you some accounts from insiders that I have who work at the, um, the company who's at the center of the lawsuit. So, um, the background on it is this. Monster Energy Drink had sued a company called Integrated Supply Network, ISN. And ISN is one of North America's largest tool distributors. They own a number of different brands. One of their private label brands is Monster Mobile. And all that is, is them creating a brand and then they buy tools manufactured by other companies that are branded under their name and sold under the Monster Mobile label. And that's a very common practice in the tool industry. Tools are commoditized now, so you see a lot of third-party branding from all the tool companies. Snap-on, Matco, Mac, Cornwell, um, really everybody, even Hus uh, the Husky brand at Home Depot, Lowe's, their Cobalt brand. These are all third-party brands or private label brands where their stuff is manufactured by some manufacturer in the industry, whoever that might be, and then it's shipped and sold to these to these companies who sell under their own brand name. Um, it's very common because um, you know there's only going to be so many companies who want to purchase or create or build their own manufacturing um, capacity because it's expensive. So who's going to build a plant just to make some ratchets and wrenches and sockets when you can buy them from you know, Apex or AJ Manufacturing or, um, or or Williams or any of those companies that are their own manufacturing and then will happily rebrand and sell it to you. So that's what is common in the industry. And Monster Mobile is nothing but that kind of thing where, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, ISN sells those, those uh, double-ended, Rationing spline wrenches, for example, under the monster name. Well, those wrenches are created by Easy Red, and they're sold um, to lots of different companies. They're, they are sold to another distributor called Medco under the Platinum brand that Medco owns. There's, um, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> oh, we're not we're not editing anything. There's, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the Platinum brand sold by Medco. Um, it's also sold through other distributors like Mac Tools, the same brand. Um, Mac just buys theirs from Medco. Easy Red sells under their own brand name. Monster used to sell under their brand. Mountain Tools was another brand owned by um, ISN. So the same wrenches are sold under that, that brand. So there's like four or five different brands of the same exact wrench. And that's just one example of how a third-party or private label branding works. So Monster Mobile was a third-party brand, and they bought in high volume of stuff. So oftentimes they could give you better pricing than we could get if we got them from some other brand, or they could throw, say, um, one nice thing that they did was if you bought a Monster Mobile floor jack, you were buying either the SunX jack, and then SunX's uh, contract expired, and then ISN was getting them manufactured by a professional tool and once that contract expired now they're getting it made by somebody else but what monster does is because they'll buy such volume and they get the buy-in from the manufacturer they can put a longer warranty on it 
say, than the manufacturer would. So in the case where SunX might put a one-year warranty on a floor jack, Monster would put another year on that. So you'd get the two-year warranty if you bought it with the Monster brand. Same jack, comes out of the same factory, but oftentimes the pricing could be less because they moved a higher volume, and you got a better warranty because that was negotiated at the time of the contract between ISN and, and whoever the manufacturer is. So that's basically how that industry works. Now, ISN decided, I don't know how many years ago, to create this Monster Mobile brand. And they had um, you know, a green color scheme as their initial scheme. And then they had introduced black and orange and some other colors. And uh, Monster Energy Drink had seen this and decided that ISN was copying them and was maliciously stealing their, their brand their look, which is called their trade dress, or some other parts of their branding, and Monster sued them, and they won the suit. So I want to read a little bit from an article that was on Yahoo Finance, and there's a couple of articles. Again, it hasn't really made the mainstream media, so there's not a lot of information to be found, uh, you know, from an, uh, from articles that have been published on it. But <clears throat> between this and the information I have from our account managers at ISN, we can piece together a pretty good picture. So I'll read excerpts from the Yahoo Finance article. A $5 million verdict for trademark and trade dress infringement sounds great on the surface for Monster Energy in its trial with the Florida Automotive Supply Company, ISN. But a strange thing happened when the verdict form was handed in following a nine-day trial in Los Angeles. Jurors awarded all $5 million dollars as punitive damages and zero dollars as damages for the trademark infringement. That's very interesting because what that means is that it's entirely possible that uh, ISN doesn't have to pay anything because if you don't award actual damages, uh, the punitive damages don't have to be paid out. So I don't know how that's going to come out. That'll probably never be disclosed. But the interesting thing is Monster Energy wins the suit, but ISN probably won't have to shell out any money. And I think it was easier for Monster just to kind of duck out and say, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of the brand anyway. Because what happened a couple of years ago was Monster was going through this rebranding effort where they were contracting their product line and they were getting rid of things like their air tool line because air tools is um, kind of evaporating as far as the market goes. It's been eclipsed by the corded, uh, the, rather the cordless tool industry. And <clears throat> they were, they wanted to kind of focus more on hand tools and some other specialty tools. So they were, uh, they were going in that direction. They rebranded, they brought in some new logos. Um, they, they changed up their, their color scheme a bit, but that wasn't enough to, to satisfy monster energy. So they went to court and, uh, and another brand that ISN owns is a company called K-Tool International. So what ISN decided to do was they're going to take the surviving Monster Mobile Tool products and move them over to their K-Tool brand. So a lot of the tools are no longer available. They've been discontinued because Monster was contracting their product line anyway. But the tools that did survive are now rebranded as their K-Tool line, which means their colors change, their logos change. And uh, that's how they're going to be going forward with that. Um, so what happened in this lawsuit was there was, um, you know, kind of both sides claimed victory on this one, which I guess both sides are going to do because they want to spin it in their favor. So Monster Energy said, we're happy with the outcome. We won because... The finding was against ISN. ISN said, we're happy because we probably are not going to have to pay them any money. Um, and they were rebranding their Monster brand anyway. But something interesting about Monster Energy in general, and this is from another article from a site called My News Desk. And that is that um, Monster Energy has sued a lot of other companies. And they've been called a trademark bully in the industry. And they don't typically win their suits. So to win this one against ISN was actually kind of new and different for them. They've sued other companies like uh, a British drink company called Thirsty Beasts. 
um, who had the slogan, Rehab the Beast. And Monster Energy said, no, it's too much like our slogan because our slogan is Unleash the Beast. Now, they lost that, that lawsuit. They also sued uh, the National Basketball Association and the Toronto Raptors team because the Raptors have a logo that uh, Monster Energy said was too similar to their claw device mark. And consumers would likely confuse Monster's three vertical slashes with the Toronto Raptors circular logo of a basketball and three horizontal claw marks. <laughs> they lost that suit too. So they they sue a lot of companies. Uh, I don't know if uh, these are settled out of court. That stuff generally is not disclosed. But they've even sued and lo- uh, they've even sued companies. Um, they they sued a, an English pizzeria called Monster Pizza. Um, that uh, there was an industrial paint company called Monster Dip that they sued, and they look for. Uh, they even sued an online forum called Monster Fish Keepers to prevent the owners from filing a trademark. So this is what Monster Energy does. And looks like ISN was just one of the latest that were caught up in their dragnet of lawsuits. But whose favorite ultimately came out to? I don't know. It looks like it was kind of a wash. But between what we can read and what I what I know talking with my, uh, with my contacts inside ISN, it looks like the product's... The products will live on under the K tool line, so we can still get you stuff that you need there. But some products have been discontinued, um, so we'll see how it all shakes out. This is still something that's in flux and hasn't completely played out yet, because the the Monster line uh, I don't know if it's completely excuse me I don't know if it's completely turned down yet, uh, or if there's some I think they still have some products in warehouses that are being sold off, but. Uh, Anyway, there'll be more on that as it uh, as it unfolds. I'll let you know if anything new and interesting happens. But the long and short of it is, right now, I can't offer you any more Monster Mobile products except a few things that I have in stock. Somebody did ask me on one of my previous videos if I had any of the Monster Mobile branded work tables left um, or if I had any of the magnetic toolbox tool tray sets left. And I got a couple... Um, so ask me if there's something that you're interested in because I might have some stuff left in my inventory that I can sell and ship to you. So that's pretty much what I know and what we can piece together on the whole Monster Mobile tool line. So do me a favor. If you've got any kind of insight or any or any uh, new information, leave it in the comments below. Link to articles and stuff too because I really want to have corroborated information i don't just want to talk speculatively about this stuff I, I want something that we can that we can use to back it up with so please cite any articles that you've read or if you've had conversations with people in the know please let me know um, and it's just good information to share i think it's kind of a fun conversation to have as this stuff unfolds i'm kind of a i don't know I, I, an armchair lawyer for lack of a better word i really enjoy understanding legal process um Although I am certainly no lawyer, but to me, it's interesting to see how things play out and how I weigh that against what I thought my idea was of the judicial process. So it's interesting to see things like this and, uh, and see how things get awarded, what it really means in the end to all the parties involved, and ultimately what it means to, to you as a consumer, because it's going to change your choices. It may very well change the offerings I can provide to you. It might change pricing. It might change availability. And these are all the fun things that are worth talking about because, um, you know, change is interesting. And this is one of those things that certainly ranks up there with, um, with some bigger changes in the tool industry. So do me a favor. Uh, let me know if you think this kind of um, video format is worthwhile, if it's interesting, if it's something that you want to see more of, because we can talk about all kinds of topics. This is one of the more interesting ones uh, because it's still active and it hasn't been quite all put to bed yet so uh, let me know what you think thanks for watching and uh, do me a favor click down here to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the stuff we've got coming up in the future we're going to be doing some more toolbox reviews we've got some uh, tools in the hall segments coming up and we're going to be doing the quarter one 2021 flyer drop video too so you don't want to miss any of that thank you so much for watching and remember use a tool don't be one.